Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for today's episode. And we've got a good one here. I want to talk about some of the misinformation that I hear when I'm, you know, at a tournament, when I'm at a, a club event, when I'm at a gathering with fishermen, if I'm looking at the internet or social media. Oftentimes, what frustrates me the most is when I see people make comments to other anglers that they're using the wrong rod. And what I mean by that is, the right or wrong rod for one individual may be the right or wrong rod for another individual. Just because the rod is the same doesn't mean that it's correct for another angler. You know, every there's so many variables that determine a rod being right for that person. Now, first, first off, we all fish differently. So I may prefer a certain type of performance out of my rod and reel versus another angler. And you know what? We both can make a chatterbait work. We both can make a spinnerbait work or a crankbait. We just have different preferences. But a lot of times I would think that if we were using the exact setup from the rod and reel to the line, to the bait, to the rod, we would all feel very comfortable in a specific setup. We probably would all come across and be like, yeah, that was good for a crankbait, or that was good for a chatterbait. The reality here though, is that when you hear people tell another individual that they're using the wrong rod, generally they don't have any clue as to what the line was that they were using, what reel they were using, and what bait they were using. And because of that, those decisions in, in reels and those decisions in lines as well as baits can affect the performance of a rod. So by choosing the, a different reel, you're going to affect the performance of the rod. By choosing a different line, you're going you're gonna to change the performance. So if one guy is sitting there and he always throws something on braid, that's going to increase the action of the rod. It's going to Im Im increase the speed of the rod. So you're going to take something from a fast to closer to an extra fast rod. If you drop down from, say, fluorocarbon to monofilament, you're going to slow up the speed of that rod. So there's major changes that happen based on the line that you're choosing. It's one of those things that we just don't often think about. So I'm going to go over how the line changes, how the baits change, as well as how the reels change. You know, here, this is one of my favorite topwater blanks that I build. This is the MHX NMB 843. It's a seven foot blank. It's rated for up to a three quarter ounce bait. It's a pretty standard all around rod. You know, it's a good standard size rod that most people would use, a medium heavy seven footer. It does a lot of things. I really like it for topwater baits, but I really like it for target topwater baits, something like this popper or something like a chopo, something where I'm making specific casts. If I went with something a little bit larger, like this uh, cane walker right here, this is three quarter ounce. So it's a big bait. But because of the size of it, when I use this bait, this rod is a little bit lighter than what I would like. Now, even though it's rated within the, the weight of the rod, it's still a little, little bit bigger than what I'd like. So if somebody says, hey, you need to use a topwater rod, well, that comes down to the bait. The baits are different, and the bait performance is different based on the lines that you choose. So if you're throwing braided line, the braided line is going to decrease stretch and therefore increase the speed of the action, which means your reaction time is gonna be faster, and it also means that you're gonna have more sensitivity. Well, that might be fine for some presentations, but if I'm throwing a crankbait, I don't wanna be throwing braid because I don't wanna pull that bait away from the fish. I'd rather not feel it and all of a sudden just be like, oh, I've got one on my line because that means that the fish had a better chance of sucking that bait in and me not setting the hook too early. So if you're throwing braid, that's gonna change the speed of the rod. It's gonna increase it. You know, if you're throwing fluorocarbon, in my opinion, that's kind of what most rods are based off of. You've got a little bit of stretch, but in general, it's a low stretch item and your performance is gonna be about what the rod rates. So if it's a, a medium heavy rod with a fast action, that's about what it is. If you go with some, or with some monofilament line, you're gonna increase a lot of stretch, which is gonna slow up the speed of your rod. And therefore, if you thought you were using a fast action, maybe it's now a little bit slower than a fast action. You know, you've, it'll increase the or decrease the uh, amount of sensitivity and therefore you're going to probably get better hookups on the fish, but you're not going to feel the bites as well. 
So when it comes down to the type of fishing that you're doing, line is gonna make a big difference. We all know that. But the reality is, not everybody likes the same line for every type of presentation. There's lots of guys out there that are still saying fluorocarbon is better for chatterbaits than braided line. I like both. I really use both in certain situations. But if somebody says, hey, you're throwing the wrong rod for the chatterbait, and you think he's using braid because that's what you use, but he uses fluorocarbon, the rod he's using might actually be the right rod for him because he's choosing a different line. That's the difference here, guys. You gotta know all the variables that come into what that person is using with a, a specific setup. If I go back to this, I've got here, my real choice is a Revo MGX reel. It's a 8.0 to one gear ratio reel, which makes it a fast gear ratio reel. I get a lot more line per reel turn than I would if it was a 6.3 to one, which then increases the speed of the rod again, because I'm gonna pick up line faster, it's going to actually create a stiffer rod. So if I pair up a fast reel with braided line, which has low stretch, on a medium heavy, moderate speed rod, I'm probably gonna make it closer to a fast action speed rod with those variables. If I drop down to a slow gear ratio reel, something 6.3 or lower, and I'm using monofilament, holy cow guys, now I've just dropped my rod down to like a moderate action, even though it's rated as a, as a fast action rod, but that's because of all the different variables. So next time somebody asks you about the rod, don't just, or if they're using the right rod, don't just ask them what their rod is. Because without knowing their line, their bait choice, and the real choice, it's really difficult to answer that question. These are all variables that we need to take into account. And I can't stress it enough because it's one of those misconceptions in the rod world where people are being told what rod they should use, but in reality, they should be, they should be told what rod, line, reel, and bait they should use because all of those work as one unit. And if the, if the machine isn't working all as one unit, then something's out of whack. And the reality is you're probably not achieving top performance and what you're doing, which may work for you, isn't what somebody else should be doing. So it's just something you gotta be aware of next time somebody asks you that question. And I think it's really important to understand how all of this works together and that it is one unit. And if you can understand the nuances of each separate uh, component of a full rod and reel setup, that's going to make you a better fisherman and it's going to help you teach others to become a better fisherman. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, share it on your social media pages, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll have another video tomorrow.